Hey, the clip you're about to uh, see is me filming uh, a page in, as you'll see at the end of the at the end of the clip, actually, um, of what fractional reserve uh, banking is, and this is what Peter Schiff basically did is in regards to his Euro Pacific uh, bank. So stay tuned; uh, it'll be you know coming up. Uh, and subscribe and again go to reprogressive.org. Peace out for now. Hey, welcome to uh, debunking uh, mainstream econ, uh, econ, I call it. Um, it's basically where I go into different economic stories and see where I can debunk it from from a what I perceive to be the basis from modern monetary theory. Now, I had actually come across a story a few months ago involving Peter Schiff. Mr. Uh, was right on one thing in regards to the housing market, which if you know anything about like loans and uh, some prime mortgages and all that stuff, you could have seen that come in the first place. So there's nothing special there, but he got the credit because he came, you know, he came out in 2006 and talked about it. Uh, the one bad thing about people of his zilk is eventually what he says comes true because of speculation and other things that Regulations would help prevent. So, anyway. So, anyway, so uh, I came across a story uh, a few months ago involving uh, Euro Pacific, uh, his uh, reserve, was it fractional reserve bank? Basically, means that it's based on Australian economics uh, or uh, Austria. Austria economics or some type of fact it is is basically like the um the bank uh, loans out uh portions of a depositor's money uh in hopes of uh getting uh fees and stuff like that based on that investment he had a fractional reserve bank basically means that any depositors' money that went in there, a fraction of it would go to investments. Uh, I mean, gold and other things like that, I'm, I'm thinking. Anyway, so because he was not a FDIC insured and he wasn't a regular uh, regu uh, regulation bank, uh, when those funds wound up being, you know, bet, bet on investments that didn't pan out, he would still owe money to the depositors. 
Uh, now, apparently, according to, let me go back to this. First of all, this was originally uh, put on uh, New York Post, but I do not want to pay New York Post for anything, so I, so I came here. American stockbroker Peter Schiff reached a settlement with tax authorities to return $66.7 million in deposits after closing a deal to liquidate his embattled Euro-Pacific bank. The 59-year-old will also have to pay 300000 in penalties, according to a copy of a settlement obtained by New York Times. Shift to pay three hundred thousand in fines. Peter Schiff, an American, I'm not, I'm not I'm not calling him an economist because he's been wrong at everything. Uh, and stop, American stockbroker agreed to return sixty six point seven million in deposits after reaching a deal with financial watchdogs in Puerto Rico to liquidate his embattled online bank. Euro Pacific Bank, furthermore, the money manager will also use several million in gold to cover any potential shortfalls and pay 300000 in fines, according to the settlement. The deal comes two years after San Juan regulators opened a probe into Euro-Pacific Bank into whether it had done due diligence on its account holders. Uh, in the report by New York State, State uh, New York Times, excuse me, states a group of tax authorities, J5, which also included the U.S. base in uh, IRS, we're investigating Schiff's online boutique bank to see whether it engaged in illicit tax evasion and money laundering activities. Earlier this year, the financial regulators in Puerto Rico halted the bank's operations due to major insolvency issues. On Tuesday, school uh, Schiff excuse me, reached a summit with regulators and agreed to return millions of dollars in deposits to pay the fines. So in other words, you had to you had to sell the gold in order to pay back depositors because I guess he found out that fractional uh, uh, reserve uh, banking doesn't work. Anyway, so in late June, bank regulators in Puerto Rico suspended Euro Pacific, citing serious in, uh, insolvency. However, in some of reached Tuesday, the bank regulators acknowledged the bank did have cash on hand. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. It means that you still had deposited money on hand. That's all it was. Uh, okay, so Euro Bank, uh, Euro Pacific Bank had roughly eight thousand depositors and one hundred forty in deposits before the probe, as previously reported by, uh, by New York Times. According to Schiff, the bank approves less than half the applicants and shut down more than five thousand bank accounts due to compliance issues. Schiff argued that media reports on Euro Pacific Bank's troubles may made it impossible for, for it to do business. Normally, as important clients like American Express refuse to collaborate with the bank. Now, the American Express refused to collaborate with a a reserve a fraction reserve bank, meaning that they couldn't guarantee the money would be there if depositors used American Express for uh, purchasing and it was deemed uh, insolvent because it was not insured because it used fractional banking to do its business because it probably lost more in investment than they gained in investment returns. At least that's how I'm looking at it. And by the way, modern monetary theory, the textbook I'm reading, which I'm not going to be doing a reading today, but I'll be, read, uh, I'll be re doing a reading tomorrow. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, modern monetary theory at the textbook, um, te the textbook reading, uh, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash mmt. Uh, also, if you're on Cash App and if you just want to support with the donation, you go to Cash App, uh, Cash dot App slash Money Sign. You download MMT. Otherwise, for other material for modern monetary theory, you can visit RealProgressives.org, dot uh, Macro and Cheese, uh, hosted by uh, Steve Grumbine. He interviews everybody between Warren Moser, Stephanie uh, Stephanie Kelton. Um, Steve Keen, he's done. He's done uh, Mike Hudson. Basically, anybody and everybody who's from the economic standpoint of macroeconomics. 
He's interviewed on there and is also shown on uh, YouTube as well. He does a show with Jordan Sheridan on Status Quo. Look that up. As well as his own uh, his own segment on Status Quo called Get Ready to Grumble uh, and other things like that. So there's tons of stuff that Steve Grumbine does, Real Progressives does. Go to realprogressive.org to look it up and donate, uh, volunteer, whatever, whatever you want to do in regards to that. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, MMT goes through that, through the textbook. The textbook, in case you're wondering, is uh, by William Mitchell, L. Rondo Ray, and Martin Watts. Look it up. Uh, when I bought it, it was about maybe 45 bucks on, I want to say Amazon, but anyway. See, uh, get back to the story here. Uh, see, he also said that banks' compliance against alleged illicit activities were extremely strict forcing the bank to reject more account applications than it approved. In 2020, the Euro Bank, Pacific Bank, was short $4 million due to inadvertent use of clients' deposits for operating expenses, an issue which Schiff says he resolved by injecting his own money into the bank. Earlier this year, the economy... Okay, the economists weighed in on the current state of the U.S. economy, saying that Federal Reserve cannot win the fight against the... Okay, he just lost his business because of Austria economics on fractional reserve banking. He can't say anything about U.S. reserves. U.S. reserves at least is backed by the FDIC. Meaning, if you're insolvent and you, if you at least have uh, assets on your books, you can sell those for reserves to stay solvent. Or at least some to that effect. Anyway, so let's see. Da, da, da. And inflation hit a new high of 9. Point, yeah, never, ever, ever listen to Peter Schiff on anything. He obviously doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. I mean, jeez. He okay, yeah. There's not much I can say about that other than the fact that he's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. He's always been wrong. He was right about one thing. One thing that got his business up and running great. He actually started Limited Brothers back in '84 until about '96 or so. Anyways, that's my story. I'm sticking to it as far as the part goes. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, so yeah, I I I had looked the story up uh, months ago. Didn't realize was, I didn't know that there was an actual um. Uh, there was a settlement because mainstream media does not cover this kind of stuff because he is so good at at uh talking their bullshit. Anyway, so yeah, and by the way, yeah, he's a libertarian. I mean, that has not that has almost nothing to do with it. But libertarians are are usually not always, but usually a, a fractional reserve uh, economist of some kind, or into that anyway, which never works. It just never works. Anyway, so let's see. I'm gonna be pausing for a couple of seconds. Be right back. I find it funny. I just did a, a obviously you just saw I did a story about Euro Pacific uh, needs to learn how to manage his own assets, uh, and now I see a on another story I'm doing uh, on uh, about uh, Ohio and Intel. Yeah, anyway, I don't need this just because you do a story or you maybe go onto a website automatically. You're hit with ads about that same website that you looked into. Anyway, it's a different thing. Uh, okay, so I was wondering... Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. Do I, I can't see it. Anyway, so I'll just kind of read this one part, and then I'll try to see if I can find the other one. Uh, I was wondering how much Ohio is going to be paying Intel to bring, to bring their business here. Now, they apparently, uh, Intel is looking for 7,000 workers. Their incentive is two billion incentive plan to bring uh, Intel uh, Corp to New Albany, New Albany, New Albany, Ohio. 
that's going to suck the you know what and that's going to suck the crap out of all the taxes from Ohio just for that BS it's not going to be fucking worth it and at least, at least, at least not in like at least not in wages and stuff like, because Ohio's going to be learn uh, is going to be losing more in taxes than it's going to uh, incoup in in business this I can almost guarantee you Big corporations like these bring in a very limited amount of jobs at a very low wage and suck up all of the taxes that the that the states would have gotten anyway if they had just done a homegrown chip place, you know, a computer chip place. Uh, see, lawmakers have approved 1.2 billion of, ta- of the proposed 2 billion incentive packages to bring Intel corporations to New Albany. And swing the deal with the tax breaks said to be worth hundreds of millions. And tell you what, come November, if I do, if I do vote, if I do get a ballot anyway, uh, I'm not voting for for Republicans whatsoever. They have messed up in too many ways and too many different uh, different uh, sectors as far as. Just policy. They have nothing. They want to take everything away. Democrats want to freaking play on race issues and stuff. And stuff they could have like made into permanent law years ago, like abortion. They could they could have codified that when Carter was in office. They didn't do that. They use everything. Both parties use everything as an issue to race on. They almost never run anything they've already done. And wanted to continue. Uh, let's see, maybe this will have the full thing. This is from May, so I mean, who knows? Uh, let's see. Uh, will I be able to see this? Okay, no. Whatever, dude. Anyway, the point being is. <sighs> the point being is. When a bigger company like Amazon, a Google, or whatever, they come in, they guarantee you so many jobs, they get far more in tax breaks, they get far more in manufacturing write-offs, they get far, they get they get more to bring BS here and to lay off so many people than they hire. So I don't think. Any corporation should be getting any kind of tax incentive to bring in any kind of jobs anywhere. And there's the supply and demand effect to your product. That itself should be a reason to bring your business somewhere. But anyway, that's all this is just my opinion. I would say learn MMT. That way you can at least see what the economy really is like. You see. Um, well, I'm just gonna get out of here. You see what the economy really is like, uh, and judge it for yourself from there. Is the most that they don't want us to do is have the education, have the knowledge, know what's going on, and be able to freely compare the pros and the cons of every aspect of policy, spending, and otherwise. Um, that's why I don't listen to Republicans or Democrats. I listen to what they have to say, then I look back at what the records are and stuff of that nature, which is every which everybody should do. And not enough of us do that, and not enough look at the at the policy that policies they want to pass. Um like but social security. The only thing they can cut in social security is administrative cost. That means laying off people. That isn't taken away from Social Security, but Social Security is its own tax. They can't repeal a tax in regards to that. Uh, that's why it's not a federal tax. It's a it's strictly a Social Security tax. And even FDR, when he said that the reason why he put it in place as a tax is so no politician can f with it. So he's acknowledging that taxes don't have to pay. For Social Security. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you and my mistakes got <laughs> got you thinking. 
anyway, yeah, never, never, ever listen to people like Peter Schiff. Never, ever. Uh, Lauren and Larry Summers is also one of them. You should never listen to either. He's been wrong on multiple occasions about multiple things. Listen to people like Warren Mosler, Steffi Kelton, Mike Norman, Steve, uh, Steve Grumbine, Steve Keen, Bill Mitchell. The people that actually know what they're talking about because they keep up on what the actual economic systems are like and not just guessing. It's out for now. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>